Hi everyone and welcome to ADJ Author Advanced User Forum. Today um, is August 16, 2012 and my name is Jessica Volak. I'm the Program Coordinator for the Center for Access to Justice and Technology and I'll be presenting. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that all attendees are on mute. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand or um, put that question in the question box. If you don't have a microphone, feel free to put your questions and comments in the question box as well. If you're calling in by phone today, make sure to enter your audio pin so that you can be heard. And this session is being recorded and it might be posted on a jauthor.org. So today, um, I'd like to talk about best practices for efficiently creating a to j guided interviews. And again, as it's a forum, um, I've come up with a couple tips, um, but we'd love to hear from you guys. You guys work with this um, a ton more, um, and you're very familiar with it. So at any time, if you have tips, feel free to raise your hand or put them in the question box, and um, we'll try and share them. And there'll be time at the end for everyone um, to share tips. So today's agenda, I've come up with tips for naming conventions, variables, script boxes, Customize list versus list from external files. Um, a tip for not reinventing the wheel. A tip for using borrowed A to J guided interviews or for updating old A to Js. And a tip I like to call reduce, reuse, and recycle. So the first tip is on naming conventions. Um, this is something that is standard pretty much across the A to J author community and the hot docs community, but um, it's always a good idea to remember to use um, the community standard, which is sentence case, where you capitalize the first word and proper nouns, as you can see in the sample that I've shown. Um, we use spaces and not underscores, and we use indicators. So TE is text, DA is date, NU is number, TF, true, false, MC, multiple choice, and C, CO is computation. This not only um, keeps it consistent throughout your hot docs and your A to J, um, so that you have the same variable names so that the combination of the two work together, but it also reminds you what kind of variable it is um, if you're looking in a variable list. So um, another thing on the naming conventions, it might be helpful to create a standard for your organization to use. Uh, beyond just our community standard. So um, think about what you want to call the end user, for example. So um, some organizations like to call them user, or end user, or petitioner, or client. These kind of things that you, if you set them up early on, um, people within the organization, when you're sharing A to J's, when you're working on A to J's together, when you're reviewing them, um, it's, it's standardized, so it's just consistent um, throughout. For more information on the community standard, you can go to lsntap.org and search for Capstones Standards and Practices for Hot Dog Server Applications in Legal Services. So again, for more information, that's on lsntap.org. The second one um, tip is on the variable tab in author mode. So here we are in the back end of A to J author. We have our tabs along the side. And the second one is the variable tab. Here it lists all the variables currently used in the A to J um, interview, how many times they're used, and what type they are, and if they repeat any comments like that. If you double clicked on the variable name, it would open up this box here, which is variable information. So it gives you the name, what type it is, whether it has multiple values, any notes you want to put here. And it also tells you what questions it's used. So this variable is only used once. If it was used multiple times, it would list them underneath. You double click on the instance where it's used, the name of the question, it will take you to that question and you can edit it there. So it's helpful if you're, um, you know, you misspelled the variable name and you want to just change those instead of having to look through every A to J and figure out what variables, you can just click on the variable go to that question, make whatever changes you need, and move on. Another thing on variables is the interview variables tab. So you're in preview mode. This is what the end user is going to see. At the bottom left-hand corner, there's the preview mode box. And it has four buttons. 
The first one is variables. If you click that button, another screen will pop up, up to the right hand side and it will show you again all the variables being used in your guided interview. But a cool thing here is that if you're halfway through the interview, um, it'll show you what values have been entered. So here I, I can see that my, um, my end user has selected the female as the gender, that their name is Jane Doe. Um, you can edit values here if you just click them. That's a neat little trick. You can just edit them there. And um, you can also, if you click on the variable, um, this top thing that says variable right here, it will sort the variables in alphabetical order. So either A to Z or Z to A. So it's helpful when you're looking for a variable instead of having to scroll through them, you can just put them in alphabetical order rather than um, this looks like the order in which they were in the interview itself. Another helpful thing in the preview mode is the script box. So um, I've heard a lot of times that people don't use this and I find it super helpful to have the script box and the variable box um, open while I'm running through a guided interview in preview mode. So again, it's in the left hand corner, that same preview mode box. It's the second button, if you click script. It shows you basically the it's like you lifted the curtain away from A to J author. And so you're seeing what's going on behind the curtain. The conditions you set, the advanced logic that's back there, whether it's working, um, it's an easy way to see live, basically, what's going on behind the scenes in the A to J. And it's great for when you're trying to diagnose problems. Um, if this right here, this question is setting which of the agents is going to be um, the name for agent one in this question. If, if this wasn't popping up properly, if the first name and the last name weren't combining to create this new variable agent one TE, I could see why it wasn't working. Um, so it's very helpful for that really dense uh, logic that can be used. Another tip is the pros and cons of customized lists versus lists from external files. So these kind of lists that I'm talking about are in field and questions. We're in the question tab, in the fields, and this is the one for states. This is the one that um, the students I work with have hit on the most, that why isn't the state list working? Um, one of the reasons is that they're using a list from an external file. So um, one of the pros of making a customized list is that you don't have to remember to upload to LHI or to share the XML file when you're sharing your A to J's between um, people. You don't have to remember to upload or to give that XML file to that person. So when you do a list from an external file, it opens up a window and you can select the XML and it attaches it to the A to J. But the path is dependent on the machine. So if I sent this A to J to um, one of my students to work on, they don't have the same path within their computer. So they would have to then take the um, XML file, change the path to where it's located on their local machine. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and if you have a lot of external links um, or external files, it can really be uh, very timely to have to go through and change those. Um, and you do have to remember to upload them with your A to J file to the LHI. So that can be something that uh, people forget to do. A way to work around that is to use a customized list. This opens up a text box and you can either uh, copy and paste uh, into it or you can type right into it. Um, it's kind of tedious though if you do have 50 states or if you have long things that will be in the list. Um, but it is a way that you don't have to then uh, remember to share that file. A pro of using the external file is that you can borrow these lists from other A to J guided interviews. So for example, the US states um, is in our A to J author new user um, packet that comes with it. So you don't have to type in all the states in order and uh, remember them all. Another tip I have is called don't reinvent the, reinvent the wheel. So there's two parts to this. Um, for the first part of don't reinvent the wheel, you can start with other guided interviews that are similar to yours if you're trying to get your project off the ground. Search the templates that are available to you on LHI and reach out to the community um, if you can't find one. So um, in the left here, I'm in the My Content section of LHI's website. I've logged in. 
I can now search for um, A to G guided interviews, hot docs, those kind of things, all here, and then they'll pull up ones that match my keyword searches. If you can't find one that's similar to yours or that's adaptable to your organization, try reaching out to the listserv and seeing if anyone else is working on a project similar to yours. The second part of Don't Reinvent the Wheel is to use field template. Let A to J Author do the work for you. So here we are in the back end of A to J Author in the questions section in the field. So instead of every time I want to gather my end user's address, um, I have to recreate the six lines for the address um, for each of the fields, A to J already has question types populated. So do I want the full address? Their name, first, middle, last. Um, phone numbers, those things are already created for you, so you don't have to do that, that work. Just remember that A to J auto-populates the variable names, and those might not match the naming conventions. Um, I think A to J author uses user, so it would say user um, address street TE. Perhaps you're not calling them user. Maybe you're calling them client or petitioner or some other way. So make sure that you go and change those auto variable uh, populate. So the first part of uh, the tips for using borrowed A to J guided interviews or updating old A to Js is to run through that guided interview that you found on LHI or someone has sent you. Um, and preview it, do it in preview mode. See what it, this is gonna look like for the end user. Keep your eye on that big picture. Keep that 40,000 foot view before you get into the details of changing all the little things you wanna change. So walk through it a couple of times in preview, pick different options, see how it flows, so you can get a real sense of the interview before you start tinkering with it and get really deep into it. Sometimes it's hard to see the forest when you're working on individual little trees. So part two of that, when you are ready to see the trees and to work on the little details, you can do two things that are helpful. You can create a report or you can create a script. So this is in uh, author mode. One of the tabs under questions is report. You can create a report or a script. Basically, um, either one of them kind of um, shows you all of the language, and all of the, the report will show you all the language, all the conditions, um, that kind of stuff that are in the A to J guided interview. And you can edit it that way. The script is helpful for the wording. So a big problem, and the thing we talk with our students here at Chicago Kent about, is plain language. We're trying to get to that fifth grade reading level. Um, we, there are a lot of students making these. They love to use those $5,000 words. So what is helpful is if we run a script and walk through it and, make, and see if we can't rephrase it or um, bring it to that plain language uh, standard that we're all looking for. And this is an easy way instead of clicking through, maybe missing a question or maybe missing a branch, this will give me all the different things I need to do to edit it for the students. Part three of using the borrowed or revising your um, old A to J's is to view the borrowed A to J, or the old A to J, and your new final A to J simultaneously. So I have a pretty big monitor, and as you can see, I was able to view both instances of A to J simultaneously. Some people use two monitors, if you're lucky enough for that one. You can switch back and forth between instances of A to J author. Um, you can have more than one open. And another way to work on it, if you don't, if you get confused with having more than one A to J open, try taking a screenshot of that borrowed A to J, put it into a Word doc, have the Word doc open and the A to J open, and then you're not confused about which, which A to J you're working on. So, um, it's a great way to use that for doing advanced logic. It can be tricky, and if you're able to see the old one or the one you want to borrow, um, and then your new finalized one, Simultaneously, it'll help you get that logic correctly. And then a tip I like to call reduce, reuse, and recycle. So this is a couple different options. Um, for this one, create a template interview with your organization's standard introduction, closing, disclaimer language, um, basically the thing that you put in every interview. And it's very similar from interview to interview, um, but make it easy on yourself. So create this template interview with just 
the disclaimer language or just the intro language, just the closing language, no other questions. Save it as, you know, intro template dot A to J. Then when you're ready to create a new A to J, copy and paste that into the new one instead of recreating it each time. It saves you time. Make sure you get your wording correctly. It's the way, you know, your organization has agreed to um, disclaim the A to J or to close it or its consistency throughout your A to J's. You can use that same idea of creating this template interview for complex logic that you reuse. So, for example, a loop collecting child information. Once you get that loop down and you've perfected it, which can take a little time, save that, just that loop, as a template interview. So, save it as, you know, loop collecting child info template dot A to J. And each time you want to use that, instead of digging through old A to J's and trying to find where exactly that loop was, you have it and you're able to quickly um, insert it into um, new A to J's. It's also a good idea when you're using these templates or when you're copying and pasting over borrowing to create a blank interim A to J. I know we just talked about having two instances of A to J open. I am suggesting having a third instance open, but it's probably a good suggestion because you don't want to mess up that final um, A to J, that one that's gonna, that you're working on that, that's the end product. So move from the borrowed A to J's to this middle interim and clean them up there. So make sure the names are, the um, variables are correct. They're um, exactly the way you've been doing it in your final interview. Make sure that the question names and the question numbering is correct. You would hate to copy and paste something over into your final A to J that messes up the, the logic or that messes up the question order or the question names and you're all out of order and you're all confused and you kind of waste the time um, fixing it that you saved by using borrowed um, A to J's or A to J parts. So make sure you use that middle one um, kind of as a blank cleaning up stage before you move them into your A to J. Okay, so this is the section that I would like for audience participation. This is a forum. It's not just um, me teaching you guys, I'd love to learn from you guys. So um, if there are any questions or any suggestions, please raise your hand. We'd love to hear from you. I'm going to unmute everyone. So feel free to mute yourself again. So I'm gonna unmute everyone. And if you have a suggestion, just feel free to um, shout it out. Now it's forwarded, and now you can. Um, so, does anyone have any uh, tips for creating it? Creating an AJ? And yeah, um, because if there's no voicemail set up, it will just say user Amy Morgan is not available. Oh, or I think we have someone that's. Say user needs three to mute three. themselves. Please leave a message. That's the default. You have to go in. Alright, I'm going to mute you all again because we're getting some feedback there. So feel free to raise your hand. Um, any suggestions, how, ways that you're doing projects that you're working on, um, any A to J's uh, issues that have arisen? I see we have some experts on here. Um, we have Dina and John, both John there on here, so they can help um, where I can't fill in those gaps. Okay, um, I'm not seeing any hands raised. See if there are any questions. Okay, last chance. Any tips? We'd love to hear from you. Oh, here I have one. Okay, Jeff, I'm going to unmute you here, and then you can ask yours, the group. I think you're unmuted. Okay, Jeff, do you have any, do you want to um, repeat your question for the group? I can't hear you. No, can you try again? Okay, 
So um, we can't seem to hear Jeff here. So his um, suggestions is that um, he's been having their authors write out the ideas in the Google box, and is that before um, before you create the guided interview to kind of give them a script to work on? Right, before the interview. So he's been having his authors write out ideas in Google Docs before the interview um, as a way to kind of create that script. That's a good idea. And we actually have done that in the past with um, our students who are creating A to J guided interviews, not in the Google Doc, but they create storyboards that um, they walk through um, each step of how exactly they're going to enter it into the A to J before they ever enter it into A to J. And Jeff is saying that people can then paste um, some of what they've used or some of what they created in the Google Doc into um, A to J's and he creates empty screens for them like the skeleton of an interview without the logic. That's, without the logic. That's a good idea for helping uh, new people. And I know that um, in the past this has really helped our students. So it might be a tip for, for those new users. Are there any other um, tips or things that you have working on? That you're working on that you have questions for the audience here? It's really a way to share um, everything we've been working on in the A to J community. So feel free to bring up any issues you've had in the past or have are having now. Okay, well, um, I'm not seeing any other questions or chat. So if that's it, um, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. And a reminder about our future um, new user forums are um, the first Thursday of every month. So the next one is September 6th. And our A to J um, author advanced user forums are every other month. So our next one is October 18th. And a big thank you to Callie for letting us use their go-to meeting services to provide this training. And if there are any other questions or feedback or if you have ideas, um, things you want to talk about in the next advanced user forum or even things you'd like to talk about or uh, have me present for the new user forums, feel free to email me at jbullock at kentlaw.iit.edu or give me a call back. All right, well, thank you everyone for attending. And I will talk to you again next time.